Hey everyone, and welcome to the Avid 5 exercise. Today, we're going to do audio sweetening, save an effect preset, splice in B-roll, apply image effects, and add a music bed. So let's get right into it. To begin, we're going to bring our cursor to the dock and open the Avid Nexus Client Manager. Same routine as always, we're going to double click Nexus 4 to log in. Our username is our access ID and our password is our first name, capital first initial, lowercase for the rest. Then we're going to mount our workspaces by double clicking each one. Minimize Avid Nexus Client Manager. And then we're going to go down to the dock again and open Avid Media Composer. All right, and we're once again presented with the front gate. So the first thing we always do is import the MA student user profile by clicking the drop down menu next to user profile and then selecting import user profile. We're going to navigate to FPA.com, Avid Exercises user profile, MA student, and open. Next, we're going to select our file location, which should be found within FPA.com, your personal workspace, last name followed by your first name, Avid Exercises, Avid 4, and last name Avid 4. From here, with last name Avid 4 highlighted, you can click open. All right, first thing we always do, is open the student standard workspace. Next, let's open up our bins because it appears that everything is closed. So we're going to double click the icon for each bin and slowly our project should come back to life. Now let's open our sequences bin and let's find our sequence. Last name Avid4. We're going to double click the icon to open it back up and now we're back in business. Now, this is the part where I need to have a tough conversation with you. I know everyone here is doing their best, and you are doing an absolutely wonderful job making it this far. But this next exercise requires your sequence to be very similar to mine. I don't need it to be frame perfect. I just need you to double check your sequence so that it has the correct edits that we made in the last video. Today, I will be building off that sequence, and if your sequence has issues like missing cuts, gaps in the sequence, misaligned audio, you're going to have a very difficult time keeping up today. I want you to succeed. I don't want you to spend an hour on this video only to find out that your sequence has irreparable issues. So I need you to check your sequence, and you can ask a local mayor crew member if you're unsure. And if your sequence doesn't look like the one on the screen right now, I strongly recommend that you practice Avid 4 again. But if your sequence looks good, I'm looking forward to continuing this exercise with you. So let's get back into it. In the last exercise, we assembled the sound bed. In today's exercise, we're going to apply B-roll. But we don't want to risk our progress so far, and so we're going to do a nifty trick that's industry standard we're going to duplicate this sequence. So I'm going to click this icon and make sure that the last name Avid4 sequence is highlighted, and I'm going to press Command D to duplicate it. This creates an exact copy with the same media inside of it, but under a different name. Last name Avid4, copy one. We're going to rename this to last name Avid4 V. Two. Press enter to save it, and then I'm going to click away to deselect the clip. Let's double click the newly duplicated sequence to have it opened up. If we look on the bottom of the timeline window, we can confirm that we are on the correct sequence. It should read last name avid4 v2. Note that this suffix we added to the sequence name isn't the only way to name sequences. Some editors prefer to add the current date to their duplicated sequences. Others prefer to title by their stage of progress, like first cut, picture lock, sound mix, color grade, etc. But remember, when naming files, avoid funky characters. Characters like stars, quotation marks, parentheses, this can confuse a lot of computers, and we want to avoid that. 
So now, with this newly duplicated sequence, we are free to make any modifications as we please without risking the progress that we have already created thus far. Alright, so before we add the b-roll, let's do a little bit of audio sweetening. I'm going to move my marker to the beginning of the sequence, and then I'm going to zoom in. Now I'm going to click the first audio clip in the sequence, clip 3. Then I'm going to open the effects workspace. And then from here, in the top right column, we're going to select audio clip to go to audio clip effects. And then EQ3 7 band. And so, with clip 3 selected, we're going to go to the icon next to EQ3 7 band, and we're going to double click it. Sometimes, when we apply an effect, Avid rearranges the selection. So let's fix that and select the Clip 3 audio again. Don't mind this error, just hit OK. But it is referring to something very important that we must do, which is in this window that pops up, which we can click and drag over here. We have to change the target drive to our personal workspace. We have to do this for every effect that we render. Now, with the clip selected and the effect applied, Let's press the Effect Mode button so we can modify our effect parameters. This opens another dialog, and don't be intimidated by this one, we're not going to be doing very much. I know audio sweetening is not everyone's forte, and so we're going to do an easy trick that we constructed. We're going to go to the Preset drop-down menu, which is shown as Factory Default right now. We're going to go to Plugin Settings, and then, hey look, there's a folder made by the mayor here. And this is the effect that we're going to use right inside, Dialog Sweetener. This is a preset that I constructed to sweeten Sue's dialog, make it more pronounced and clear. So now we want to place this effect on the rest of Sue's dialog. However, this process we just did can get very tedious, so I'm going to show you a crafty technique that Avid has so that we can expedite this process. Inside the effects workspace, we're going to go to the sidebar tab and open our bins. And we're going to press command N to create a new bin. We're going to title this one, Effects. We're going to make sure that it's open by double clicking it. And now we know that it's open. Back to this window over here where we selected our target drive. This icon in the top left, if we click and drag it, into our bin, it's going to create an effect preset based off of the work that we just did to clip 3. So we can close this window and this window. Let's go back to the student standard workspace and then let's zoom out. Next, we're going to select the rest of the dialog clips in the sequence. But I don't feel like clicking each and every clip again. I mean, I made an effect preset so I could avoid this exact thing. So we're going to use another awesome shortcut to select the rest of the clips. To do this, first we're going to deactivate V1 in the sequence and make sure that A1 is the only track that's active. We're going to move our marker so that it's in the middle of the next clip in the sequence, in this case, clip 1. And then I'm going to press the To the Right button. This selects everything to the right of the marker, including the clip that's on the marker right now. One important note, if you use this button or you use in and out markers to select portions of your sequence in your timeline, it will only select from the tracks that you have active, which is why we left A1 active and deactivated V1, because in this case we only wanted to select the audio clips on our sequence. So we have clip 1 all the way to the end of the sequence selected, so we're going to go back into our effects bin and find our newly created effects preset and we're going to double click the plugin icon. And now the effect is applied to the rest of the audio clips. Now let's move the marker to the beginning of the timeline. And let's go to the audio workspace. This will make it easier to see the levels as it plays. So let's hear how it worked. So those are pretty strong political roots even though 40 years later most people don't know that story. My name that sounds excellent, but as you can see, it appears that the dialog only peaks at around negative 16. But ideally, we want our audio bouncing between negative 6 and negative 12. 
So we need to raise the audio level on the A1 audio track. I'm going to raise the slider until it says plus 7 and no higher than that. And I'm going to see what it sounds like on clip 1. My name is Sue Blau. I am associated with the Dowie because in 1976 I moved into... Perfect. Now here's the issue. When you change the volume of something on a track in the audio mixer, that change only applies to the clip that you're currently on. So, watch the slider as I move the marker to the beginning of the timeline. It jumps back down to zero. That's because that modification that I made, raising it by seven decibels, only applied to the clip that I was on. In this case, that was clip one. In the spirit of shortcuts, I'm going to show you one more shortcut so that we can easily update the levels of the rest of the clips to match the audio level that we updated on clip one. Because otherwise, we'd have to do this to every individual clip in A1, and we don't want to do that. So, with the marker on clip one still, in the audio mixer window, I'm going to go to the hamburger menu, and I'm going to select set level on track global. Now, every audio clip on the A1 track should have its level at plus 7 to match clip 1. So that shortcut is great for dialogue, but be careful. This trick only works correctly if your tracks are organized properly. Every single audio clip here in A1 came from the same source at the same level. So I'm not going to run into surprises down the road. However, if I had an explosion sound effect in A1, that would have blown my ears out because I cranked it up along with Sue's dialogue. So down the road, if I introduce B-roll with sound, I'm going to make sure to route the audio to a different track, just to ensure that I don't mix up audio settings between the two audio tracks. Now, with the audio sweetened, we're going to go back to the student standard workspace, and we're going to move on to B-roll. We're going to go to our source browser from the sidebar tab, Oops, sometimes it does this, so just go back to the bins and click Source Browser, and it should be back to normal. From here, let's navigate to the Avid Exercises workspace, the Avid Exercises folder, Avid 5, Media, B-Roll, and now we've found all the B-Roll for today's exercise. So, I'm going to press Command-A to select all of the clips. Then I'm going to make sure link is highlighted, make the target bin B-roll, and then click link. We're going to link music at the same time. So we're going to go to music, select this Josh Woodward MP3 file, make sure it's linking, and then set the target bin to music. Click Link, and finally, we're going to go to Stills, and we're going to select both the image files. But rather than linking, because these are stills and we want to maintain maximum fidelity, we're going to press Import for the first and only time. In Resolution, we're going to choose 1 to 1. In the Drive, we're going to choose our personal workspace. And then we're going to click the gear icon next to import. And in the import settings, we're going to make sure that it is set to do not resize smaller images. We're going to make sure it scales from full range to legal range. In alpha channel, we're going to select ignore. An alpha channel is basically a transparency channel, and neither of these images have that. Then make sure everything is unchecked under filtering, uncheck dilate fill, and make sure alpha encoding is set to uncompressed. And then we're going to select the duration here. This is going to create sort of a video clip of the stills. And 15 seconds is fine. So we're going to hit OK. With these settings confirmed, import is still selected. We're going to choose the bin, and it's going to be stills. Then we'll click import. Now let's go back to the bins, and let's see what we did. We have video here in the B-roll, 
I'm going to double click name to reorder it from lowest to highest. I'm going to go to music, perfect. Now stills, perfect as well. All right, so let's get ready to hang some B-roll. We're going to go to the B-roll bin. And before we select any clips, I want to show you a couple of views for the bins. At the top, next to this lock icon, are different selections for bin views. We have the one that we have right now, list view. Then we have icon view. And finally, script view. We're going to stay in script view because this allows us to write comments on each clip that we have. We're going to click the preview icon to load it up into the source monitor. And then we're going to hit play. We're going to go back to this text box under B-Roll 1, and we're going to say this is DALI logo mural on brick wall. Sure. And now let's open up B-Roll 2. Let's hit play on that. I swear I'm not that, I swear. <laughs> In this one, we have students walking on rooftop and so on and so forth. You can write a comment on any clip in any bin in Avid, even sequences. Speaking of, let's try that with our sequences. I'm going to go to the sequences bin and we're going to open up script view. And on our previous sequence, the one that we just duplicated to make our current sequence, we're going to write all the progress that we did on it, just so we remember if we have to revert back to it. Let's say sound bed. And on this one so far, we did sound bed EQ. And at the end of this, we're going to have B roll. So let's leave it at that. We're going to go back to our B-roll. And we're going to go back to list view, because that's my preferred method. Just so you know, your comments are over here, actually, as well. So if you'd like to read them, you can click over here. So let's get started with hanging the B-roll. We're going to open up B-roll 03. And for this one, once again, I'm going to be placing in and out points because I already have a list with the plan for how to order all the B-roll that we have. So let's get started. Before we place our in and out markers, I want to make sure we're all on the same page again. We're going to open the tracking information menu, and then we're going to select under source tracks, V1, TC1, and it should be followed by four sets of zeros. So our first in point is going to be at 0000. Press I to place the in marker. And then our out point for this clip is going to be at 3 seconds even. We're going to press O to place the out marker. And so before we splice this in, we got to make sure everything is routed correctly. I'm going to bring the marker back to the beginning. And we're going to make sure that audio is deactivated. Because whenever we're splicing in B-roll, we do not want the audio from the B-roll. Now, as it seems, it looks like we'd be splicing over the talking head which is not what we want to do, because then it's permanently erased. So we're going to press Command-Y to make a new video track, and we're going to route to V2. One very important note, and a very easy one to miss at that. When we add new video tracks, we have to make sure that the monitor, shown here by this blue TV icon, is active on the highest track. This button lets you turn layers of video invisible like muting audio tracks. And now, when we splice in with the V key, and we move the marker back to the beginning, if we hit play. So those are pretty strong political roots, even though. The B-roll plays over clip three with Sue. And then, when it finishes, the next highest video track, with Sue's talking head, continues from there. If we make the highest active track V1, when we move the marker back and hit play again. So those are pretty strong political roots, even. The B-roll is not present. 
but it's still there ready to place. So if we reactivate it, we're back in business. So if your clips are on the timeline, but you can't see them, try checking here. I'm going to hold Command while moving the timeline position marker and snap it to the end of B-Roll 3. And now let's open B-Roll SM04. These are named SM because these are in slow motion. The end marker for this one is going to be at 0309. Press I to place the end marker. And then the out point is going to be at 0409. Press O to place the out marker. And now let's make sure that the audio is deactivated again. Make sure we are routed correctly and that this top track is active. And then we can press V to splice in. Perfect. I'm going to zoom in a little bit on our track. And we're going to make sure that this clip ends right before she says most. So 40 years later, most people. Right at this waveform is where she says most. So let's place our marker right before that to help us remember. Then we're going to place our mouse in the top right corner of the BRSM04 clip in the sequence until our mouse looks like a red roller. This is the overwrite trim tool, and we're going to use this tool by clicking and dragging to extend this clip to that waveform. Now let's go to BRSM05, and the end marker for this is right here at 0000. Press I to place the end marker. Then we're going to go to 2 seconds even. And press O for the out marker. We'll deactivate audio again. Now, with the timeline position marker at the end of BRSM04, we can splice in with V. And then we want to make sure that there's no jump cuts right here after this clip ends. So we're going to use the red overwrite trim tool and hold command so that it snaps to the end of clip 3. That way, when it cuts to clip 1, there's no jump cut between clip 3 and clip 1. Story. My name is Sue Blau. Perfect. I'm going to click and drag and hold command to snap it to the beginning of clip 1. And we want this next clip to be spliced in right before she says, I moved in. My name is Sue Blau. I am associated with the Dowie because in 1976, I moved into... There it is. Let's play it back just to confirm. I... Yep, right there. Right before the I in I moved into, that's where we're going to place our marker to splice in the next clip. So we're going to go to our stills bin, and then we're going to open up the second Terrace JPG. This is an image, and you can see that it actually doesn't fit the full raster dimensions of the video, and we're going to have to adjust that later. But for now, we already know we want this to be placed right here. When we scrub through a still image, it's a whole clip of the still image. Nothing changes, and it's exactly the same the entire way. So we could place our in and out points basically anywhere. So at 00, we're going to place the in marker. And then at 0600, we're going to place the out marker. All right, with the marker right before she says I moved into, and with the in and out points set, we're going to press V to splice in. Nice. And now we want this to end right before she says I moved to. The Second Avenue Terrace, I moved to. All righty then, right before the I in I moved to, we're going to use the red roller, a.k.a. the overwrite trim tool, to shorten the clip to right before the waveform of I. I'm going to scroll a little bit to the right to make this a little more centered. Now let's go back to our B-roll bin. We're going to go to B-roll 08, and we're going to place the in marker here at 218. Press I to place the in marker. And then we're going to end this one at 0600, 
Press O to place the out marker. Next, we're going to deactivate A1 from the source monitor. And with the marker still at the end of the second terrace clip, we're going to splice in with V. All right, for the next clip, we're going to move our marker to the beginning of clip two. And so I'm going to click and drag the marker and hold command to snap it to the beginning of clip two. And now let's open up B-roll 09. And we're going to place the in marker at 0206. I to place the in marker. And we're going to place the out marker at 0900. O to place the out marker. And now we're going to deactivate A1 again and press V to splice in. So take note of this. We're going to use B roll 09 to cover up all these jump cuts that we created from splicing together Sue's talking head in clip 2. This is a common, simple, and incredibly effective documentary editing technique. Now we want to end B roll 09 right before she says there in There Was a Group. There was a group. There it is. We're going to use the red overwrite trim tool to roll it back to right before she says there. And now with the marker here, we're going to go to B-roll SM03. We're going to place the in marker at 0200. Press I to place the in marker. Then we're going to place the out marker at 0900. Press O to place the out marker. And then we're going to press V to splice in. I'm going to slide over again, and we're going to end this clip before she says, Wayne State. They did that. They didn't want the buildings torn down. Wayne State was... So, we're going to end this right before she says, Wayne State. And now, let's open up B-roll 05. We're going to place the in marker at 0118. Press I to place the in marker. We're going to go to 0614 to place the out marker. Press O to make the out marker. We're going to deactivate audio and press V to splice in. Now we're going to end this one before she says the first dally. Then some of the citizens did. So the first dally was... All right, she says the first dally all the way over here. And so we're going to extend this clip all the way over there. Let's see how it sounds. So the first dally was to get petition. Perfect. I'm going to hold command while I move the marker to snap it back to the end of B-roll 5, and I'm going to slide a little bit further over. And next, we're going to go back to the stills bin, and we're going to click Dally Posters. This is a collage that we constructed of historic dally posters. We're going to place the end marker at zero, so we'll place it right now with I. Then we're going to place the out point at 7, press O to make the out marker, and then we'll splice in with V. We're going to end the Dally Posters clip right before she says the in the diversity, the diversity, which is right there at clip 4. So I can hold command while I use the red overwrite trim tool, and it'll snap right to the beginning of clip 4, which is perfect for us. And now let's go back to the B-roll bin. We're going to go to B-Roll SM01. And we're going to place our in marker at 0100. Press I to place the in marker. Then we're going to make the out marker 0500. Press O to place the out marker. And then we're going to deactivate A1 and press V to splice in. We're going to end B-roll SM01 right before she says and in and I guess. Is important. And I guess. So we're going to extend this clip with the red overwrite trim tool to right before she says and I guess. And now let's open up B-roll SM02. We're going to place the in marker at 0309. Press I to place the in marker. And then we're going to place the out marker at 11 even. Press O to make the out marker. And then we'll deactivate audio 
and press V to splice in. I'm going to slide a little bit further over. And we're going to end this clip before she says, students. Artists, students. So right there at this waveform. And now let's open up BRSM08. We're going to place the in marker at 0307. Press I to make the in marker. Then we're going to end this clip at 0822. Press O to make the out marker. Deactivate audio and press V to splice in. This one's going to end on used to live there. I mean the people who used to live here. So this waveform is right where she says used. And now let's move on to BRSM11. We're going to place our in marker at 0202. Press I to make the in marker. And then we're going to go to 0723. Press O to make the out marker. Deactivate audio. And press V to splice in. This one's going to end right before she says moved. And many of them have moved. So we'll extend this to right before she says moved. And then we're going to keep trucking along. We're going to go to BRSM06. Sorry, BR06, actually. And we're going to place the in marker at 0408. Press I to make the in marker. And then we're going to go to 0910. Press O to make the out marker, deactivate audio, and then we're going to roll a little bit further along so that we can see this better. And then I'm going to press V to splice in. We're going to end this right as she says, looks now. How wonderful it looks now, but how... Ah, that was actually perfect already how it is, but I'm just going to move it just to demonstrate a tiny bit, a few frames. And now let's go to B-roll 02, and we're going to place the in point at 0315. Press I to make the in marker, and we're going to place the out marker at 0503, just about near the end, but right before it goes black. We're going to press O to make the out marker, and then we're going to deactivate audio and press V to splice in. But uh-oh, I wanted this clip to go all the way to clip 5. But since we placed the out marker right at the very end, I know we don't have enough to extend it all the way to there. Instead, we're going to extend the beginning of the clip because I know we have a lot of usable footage there. I'm going to use the Ripple Trim tool on the bottom left corner of B-Roll 02 on the sequence. It should look like a yellow roller with the tape on the right. And then from there, I'm going to click and drag to the left until I reach the cut over at clip 5. Now, when I play this through... Well, it looks now, but how yuppified it is. There's an upside. Perfect. Now, we want to show Sue in this sequence again, and so we're going to hold off on placing the next B-roll until right when she says, there's a shadow side. So I'm going to hit play to find that point. ...to this neighborhood and how things are preserved and... There's a, a shadow side. She pauses while she says there's a shadow side. And so I'm going to place the next B-roll right in the middle of that. There's a... Right there, right after she says there's a, but before she says a shadow side and completes her sentence. So with the marker in the correct position, we're going to open up B-roll 10. We're going to place the in marker at 0118. Press I to make the in marker. Then we're going to go to 0515. Press O to make the out marker. Then we're going to deactivate audio again and press V to splice in. I'm going to scroll to the right. And we're going to end this one right when she says improvement. 
electrification and improvement in the community. Very, very close. So I'm going to just roll this a little bit back. And improvement in the Perfect. I'm going to hold Command while moving the marker to snap it to the end of B-Roll 10. And now let's open up B-Roll SM07. Home stretch here. And we're going to place the in marker at 0103. Press I to place the in marker. Then we're going to go to 0305. Press O to place the out marker. Deactivate A1. Press V to splice in. We want this one to end right before she says polarity. Improvement in the community. And that polarity. There it is, polarity. We're going to use the red overwrite trim tool, and we're going to roll it to right before she says polarity. And now we're going to open up BRSM10. So we're going to go to 0606. Press I to place the end marker. Then we're going to go to 0915. Press O to place the out marker. We're going to deactivate A1. And we're going to press V to splice in. So we want this to end right after she says, makes me. Makes me. So we're going to use the red overwrite trim tool. And we're going to roll it back to right after she says, me. And now we're going to open up BRSM09. We're going to place the in marker at 0213. Press I to place the in marker. Then we're going to go to 0507. Press O to place the out marker, deactivate A1, then we're going to press V to splice in. And we're going to end this clip before she says is in is more inclusive. Hope that the new is more is inclusive. All right, right where she says is is this waveform, so I'm going to extend it right there. And now we're going to grab B-roll 07. We're going to go to 0116. Press I to place the in marker. Then we're going to go to 04, even. Press O to place the out marker. We'll deactivate A1, and then we'll press V to splice in. We're going to end this one right before she says, and keeps. And keeps the. All right. We're going to use the red overwrite trim tool to extend this. And finally, for the last clip, we're going to splice in BRSM06. In marker is going to be 0207. Press I to make the in marker. Then we're ending at 0606. Press O to make the out marker. Deactivate A1. And then we're going to press V to splice in. So this one has a little bit of overhang over the clip, and that's totally fine, because we're going to have a music bed playing under this that can fade out gently as this fades out as well. But you know what? I still think that I should add a little more. And I think I want to do that by adding a freeze frame at the end of this clip. To add a freeze frame, we're going to go back to the source monitor. And we're going to click inside it to activate it. We're going to keep our marker right where the out marker was. So make sure yours is still there. We know the marker is right on the out point because you can see the triangles on the right side of the source monitor. I also know I'm right here because I just spliced this clip in and haven't changed anything since. So, with my cursor inside of the source monitor, I'm going to right click or control click. And then I'm going to select freeze frame, 30 seconds, and then I'm going to select my drive as my personal workspace, your last name and your first name, hit OK, and then I'm going to select the bin that it's going to land in. I want this to be in stills, because this is a still image that we are creating. Otherwise, you can also create a new bin to make a still image bin. We're going to hit OK. And now, if we go to our stills bin, we should see BRSM06 freeze frame. That's what FF stands for. I'm going to double click it, 
and it looks identical to this one that we just had at the end of the sequence. If I buffer through this entire thing, it's just 30 seconds of a still image, so we can place the in and out markers anywhere. I'm going to place an in marker at the beginning, 0000. zero, zero, zero. Then I'm going to give it a few seconds and place the out marker at 0221. And now I can splice in with V. Excellent. Let's see how that played out. Nice. So remember those other still images that we spliced in? The ones that didn't look so perfect on screen? We're going to correct that. We're going to add a couple of effects to them. I'm going to scroll all the way back to the first still image that we placed. Second Terrace, for me, it was at about a minute and uh, a few frames. I'm going to select Second Terrace. Then I'm going to go to the Effects workspace. And then we're going to select the Image subcategory. And then, with the second terrace clip in the sequence still selected, we're going to double-click Avid Pan and Zoom. Now the effect has been applied to second terrace JPEG. And we don't see anything quite yet, and so we've got to correct a couple of things as soon as this effect loads up. We're going to hit the checkbox for Import Image, and then we're going to go find our image in our finder. So it's going to be an FPA Com, Avid Exercises, the Avid Exercises folder, Avid 5, Media, Stills, and there it is right there, Second Terrace JPG. It's just like we're importing it again, which is actually exactly what we're doing. And then we're going to change the display to Target so that we can see the image that we're creating. And so let me just explain this interface real quick. So this is actually a timeline. And this marker on the left exactly reflects the position of the marker in the sequence below. But this one only covers the beginning to the end of the second terrace clip below. So if I move this marker, you can see it moves the marker in our sequence as well. And so I'm going to make sure that the marker is at the very beginning of this clip. Then we're going to move our cursor to the pink triangle at the bottom of the effect editor window. We'll click the pink triangle to add a keyframe, and then we'll select Add to All Parameters. And now we've added our first effect keyframe. Next, let's go to the Velocity category, and for both In and Out, we're going to set those to Linear. And now, we're going to move the marker to the very end of the clip. We're going to click that pink triangle again, and we're going to place another keyframe. We're going to Add to All Parameters. And then we're going to make sure that it's still set to linear as well. So I'm going to go back to the first keyframe by clicking the triangle at the very top of the column. And we're going to make some changes. First, we're going to go to the size category and move the slider on zoom factor. After you click and drag the slider, you can type the number that you want to change the parameter to. In this case, type 1.1. And now we're going to change the Y position. We're going to change this to negative 184, so I'm going to move the slider and then type negative 184. And now let's select the keyframe at the end by clicking the triangle at the top of the right column. And then this one, we're just going to change the Y position to negative 79. So we're going to move the slider and then start typing. So what exactly did we just do here? Well, on the first keyframe at the beginning of the clip, we zoomed in and framed it near the top. On the second keyframe, at the end of the clip, we framed it closer to the middle. So when we hit play, it's going to start at the top and then slide down slowly and zoom out. But this won't play smoothly just yet. We have to render first. And now we're going to move the marker to the middle of the clip just to be safe. Then we're going to right click or control click the second terrace JPG on the sequence. We're going to select render, render at position, Double check that we're in the correct spot because it'll say one effect to render. Then we're going to make sure the drive is set to our workspace and then hit OK. This will ensure that the effect is smooth and stutter free when we hit play. I moved into the Second Avenue Terrace. I moved. Perfect. Now let's scroll over to the middle of the sequence and use the same effect on the Dali Posters clip. For me, it's at about a minute and 50 seconds. Let's select the Dali Posters clip, and then I'm going to place the effect again. I'm going to go to the Effects workspace, select Image in the Effects, 
and then select Avid Pan and Zoom by double clicking. This time, the effect editor didn't automatically pop up for me, and so, to activate the effect editor, I'm going to press the Effect Mode button. And uh-oh, sometimes Avid doesn't look the way that we want it to, so we're going to have to modify the window. I'm going to place my mouse at the left edge of the Effect Editor window so that it turns into a double arrow. Then, I'm going to click and drag to the left, and if I go far enough left, the timeline will show up in the Effect Editor window. Then we're back in business. Now let's work on this effect. We're going to import the image. We're going to go to FPA.com, Avid Exercises, the Avid Exercises folder, Avid 5, Media, and Stills. And now let's select DALI Posters, PNG. We're going to change the display to the target. And then we're going to move the marker to the very beginning of the clip. We're going to place our first keyframe, and we're going to add it to all parameters. We're going to change the velocity to linear, and then we're going to move the marker to the very end of the clip. We'll place another keyframe and add it to all parameters once again. We'll double check that everything still says linear, and then we'll select the keyframe at the top of the column on the left. For this one, we're going to change the zoom factor to 1.5. So I'm going to click and drag the slider first and then type 1.5. For the X and Y positions, they're both going to be negative 155. So I'm going to click and drag and then type negative 155. Click and drag, negative 155. Now I'm going to select the keyframe at the top of the right column so I can move to the end of the clip. And this one's going to have the same zoom of 1.5. So I'm going to click and drag and type 1.5. Then the X and Y positions are going to be 155, 155. So not negative, but positive. Perfect. And now we're going to move the marker to the middle of the clip that we just edited. We're going to right click or control click select Render, and then Render at Position. We're going to make sure that's on our drive, and then hit OK. Now let's see how it went. The first dally was to get petitions signed and voters registered. The diversity in the... Cool! So now we're going to apply one more effect. We're going to zoom out just a little, and we're going to move to the right and we're going to find B-roll 02 on our sequence. Mine's at about a minute and 22 seconds. I'm going to select the clip, and this time I'm going to choose the resize effect, which is inside of image once again. I'm going to double click resize, and now the effect is applied. And then to edit the effect with this clip still selected, we're going to press the effect mode button. Once again, the window doesn't look quite like I want it to, so I'm going to click and drag the right edge of the Effect Editor window to expand it. Next, inside the Effect Editor window, we're going to click these drop-down arrows to open the effect parameters. And for this one, we don't need to place a keyframe, because what we're doing is we're correcting the frame. As you can see, on the right side of the image, someone left a shotgun mic, and it's visible for the entire clip. So we're going to correct that. We're going to change the scaling to 105%. 105. We can hit Enter. The Y scaling should automatically reflect that as well because Fix Aspect Ratio is on. And then, and then we're going to move the frame a little bit to the left so that we cut off the rest of the mic that's still slightly in there. And so we're going to go to X position, slide it to the right, and then type 25 and hit enter and now we have a clean frame if you ever have to resize a video clip the max that we recommend is maybe 10 to 15 percent if you zoom in any further you begin to lose a lot of fidelity and you can notice the pixelation because we're cropping in further into the image for this clip we only cropped in by five percent so we're still relatively clean let's see how it looks looks now but how 
yuppified it is. Nice. And now the last thing we're going to do today is add a music bed. So we're going to go back to the student workspace. I'm going to zoom out. And I'm going to move the cursor to the very beginning of the sequence. Now let's add another stereo audio track by pressing Command, Shift, and U together. And then we're going to go to our music bin. We're going to open up the Josh Woodward song into the source monitor. And we're going to splice in the whole song. So before we splice in, we're going to make sure that everything is routed correctly. We're going to deactivate V2 and make sure that only A1 from the source monitor is routed to only A2 in the sequence. We're going to be able to splice this in now. If we don't place any in and out markers, it'll actually splice in the entirety of the clip. And that's what we want to do. So I'm going to press V to splice in. And I'm going to zoom back out. I'm going to open the track control panel. And I'm going to show waveforms. And we can see that it's really loud. So like last time, we don't want to hit play yet. We want to drop that volume real fast. So we're going to go to the audio workspace. We're going to select the A2 slider, and we're going to drop it down to about negative 24. Now, when we hit play at the very beginning of the sequence, it should sound beautiful just underneath her voice. So those are pretty strong political roots, even though 40 years later, most people don't know that story. My name is Sue Blau. I I'm associated with the Dowie because in 1976, I moved in. Nice. Now let's trim the clip. So we're going to move the marker to the end of the sequence where the last B-roll clip ends. If you want to zoom in, you can totally do so. Then we're going to make sure that A2 is the only track activated on the sequence. And we're going to press the R key to trim the tail of this clip. Perfect. So we've made some pretty good progress for today, so we're going to wrap up. I'm going to hit Command S to save. And then I'm going to press Command Q to quit the program. We're going to confirm and leave. We're going to go to the dock and open up Avid Nexus Client Manager. We're going to disconnect from everything and unmount our workspaces. Command Q to quit the program. And then we're going to check the dock again and make sure that there aren't any rogue programs operating and we're good to go. Congratulations on finishing Avid 5. Thank you for staying the entire time, and I'll see you in Avid 6.